The Emperor's Clothes Again, many of the verses Calvinists use to support T in Tulip, such as John chapter 1 verse 13 and Romans chapter 9 verse 16, have nothing to do with the concept of total depravity. In such passages, we are simply told that by our own will, we cannot force ourselves upon God. He is the author of salvation, and it is all by His mercy and grace, not by our effort or will, that we are saved. None of such passages, however, declares that anyone is unable to believe the gospel when it is presented to him with the convincing and convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 is also cited, but this is clearly talking about the Christian working out in his life the salvation he has been given. It has nothing to do with either total depravity or believing the gospel. Calvinists consider the T in tulip to be of paramount importance. One of their writers argues that the doctrine of total depravity is one of the most important truths that needs to be re-emphasized in our day. He begins his booklet by associating those who reject the Calvinist definition of total depravity with the remarks of professional wrestler Macho Comacho, who has no conviction of sin, with those who deny that we are sinners saved by grace, with those who try to attract sinners with excitement and avoid dealing with sin with those who try to build up the sinner's self-esteem, with those who preach a steady diet of positive inspiration, reminiscent of Norman Vincent Peale and Dale Carnegie, etc. Yet these are all errors against which non-Calvinists write and preach from Scripture, just as much as Calvinists do while rejecting the unbiblical theory of total depravity. The writer being quoted then credits the doctrine of total depravity with uniquely 1. Causing us to despair of ourselves and to cast ourselves completely upon Christ alone for salvation. 2. Humbling our pride. 3. Helping us to witness to sinners as a fellow sinner. 4. Causing us to fear trusting ourselves and driving us to trust totally in the Lord. 5 causing us to bear up under suffering without complaint. 6. Giving us greater love and forgiveness toward those who wrong us. And 7. Moving us to greater love and devotion to God for His amazing grace. One wonders how that author could seriously believe that those of us who reject Calvinism's peculiar definition of total depravity are therefore lacking in these supposedly unique benefits, which he credits exclusively to the doctrine of total depravity.